Hey, Shalom Israel, Most High Christ, Bless, Officer David, IUIC Jamaica, Montego Bay Camp. We are out here, I'm Soldier Mayaka Shalom and myself. All right, welcome to another edition of our Deuteronomy 28 project, where we highlight curses that identifies the people of Jamaica as the biblical Israelite. Yes, as the biblical Israelite. We are in the town of Montego Bay Parade today, the parish of St. James. And we're going to cover a, a, a brief history of one of our forefathers today. All right, as many know, Sam Sharp Square. Follow us, Israel. There are three structures here in Montego Bay. You have the courthouse um, right before me, and you have the cage, and we're gonna go by the monument of Samsha. This was the era where it was executed and put to death after the rebellion. Hey, Israel, we are standing at the Sam Sharp Monument here in Montego Bay Parade. Sam Sharp was one of Jamaica's hero, or is one of Jamaica's hero. He led what is called the Baptist War, or rebellion. He believes that a simple peaceful resistance against the British would have forced them to abolish slavery. He was a deacon in the Baptist church. He was able to rally the slaves during religious meetings that were allowed for activity or organized activity. So he was able to lead the rebellion. However, we know he was subdued by the British. He was executed here on the grounds that we are standing now. Years later, the British eventually abolished slavery in Jamaica. But that's not what the history we came here to identify as it pertains to the curses of Deuteronomy. We are going to highlight some key notes from Sam Sharp's history. Not just affect the people here in Jamaica, but worldwide. There were people who have been brought on slavery, scattered right throughout the herd, re-identified, reclassified, and renamed. All right? The question is, where did Sam Sharp got his name? Samuel Sharp was this, actually the slave owner of Sam Sharp. He served on the Pridon plantation, and that's where he got his name. Israel, let's see how that relates to the curses of Deuteronomy 28 today. Deuteronomy 28, verse 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations, whether the Lord shall lead thee. So Moses prophesied that the nation of Israel would have been astonished in these last days, and they would have been a proverb. A proverb is a slogan. Anything too black, no good. Anything you want to hide from a black man, put it in a book. And a byword is going into any given name outside of your God-given name. Names that you were called by your forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Names with actual meaning. Names that have good meaning. So just like Sam Sharp, <laughs> we were renamed by our slave masters. What's your name? Like many of us today, we are called Smith. Tell me. We are called Jamaicans. We are called Trinidadians, wherever our people have been scattered. So similar to Sham, Sam Sharp, he got, got his name Aye. from his slave master, Say it again. like many of us. Say it louder so they all can hear you. What's your name? All right, Israel, so we're on our way to a small town to uncover some history. In the aftermath of the Sam Sharp rebellion, there was a massacre, one of the most brutal massacres that took place in Jamaica's colonial history. So we're going to a town, we're going to uncover some history today, so stay tuned. Where we're standing is in a town in St. James called Adelphi, Lima. Following the aftermath of the 1838 Sam Sharp Rebellion, in this town you had militia groups who came. After the brutal execution of the rioters and Sam Sharp, 
it didn't end there. We've recently uncovered some history. Shalman Scott, one of uh, Montego Bay's first mayor, he was very instrumental in uncovering the history of what happened here in Lima. Right here that we're standing, over 300 men and women were massacred. Cold-blooded murder by the British. Militia group was hosed by the Anglican Church. They gave off a facade as if they were ab ab abolitionists for the African slaves. But they was instrumental, they, they joined forces with the planters and benefited financially from the planters to seek out those rioters and they ensured that they killed them right here in Lima. All right, the churches were instrumental, the Maroons were instrumental in this massacre. They, they tried to erase this from history, but here are we unveiling history to our people. These same churches we talk about, they are not for us. They have been against us. The churches were initially in, instrumental in our slavery. The Catholic Church, the Pope, the fifth Pope of Rome. So come out of these churches, Israel, we're unveiling history. But what does this history have to do with Deuteronomy 28? Stay tuned. All right, so we are at the Anglican Church. This was one of the churches that was the militia groups that came and massacred our people. And as you can see earlier, I tried to interact with one of the members here and she knew a little about the history, but she oh, was okay. unwilling to an stop and speak to us. However, as we've always been saying, the Christian church is the right arm of white supremacy. So you have all seen a very brutal and sad history, one that was almost removed from the history books. But some of you may be saying, why? Why did all these things happen to us? Why did our forefathers die so brutally by vicious tyrants? Let's read that in the book of Deuteronomy 28 and verse 25. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 25. The Lord shall cause thee to be smitten before thine enemies, Thou shalt go out one way against them, and flee seven ways before them, and shall be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. Let's examine this. The history that you have seen in Lima, Adelphi, we were massacred, killed, cold-blooded before the British. The churches in, were involved. The, the, the Maroons, certain Maroons were also involved. That was being smitten before an enemy. Thou shalt go out one way against them because that's what the, the rioters were doing. They had to flee, they had to leave, left, leave everything, their families. They had to go into hiding place, seek refuge. So they were scattered and flee seven ways before them. Thou shalt remove into all kingdoms of the earth. In 1794, there were a lot of war against the government and certain Maroons were taken and were deported out of Jamaica places like Nova Scotia and later on Sierra Leone. So this fulfills the prophecy. What you see in Lima is Bible prophecy. Deuteronomy 28 is indeed a true book that identifies the so-called Jamaicans and slaves. The whole nation have been scattered, not just Jamaica, worldwide. We are the children of Israel. All right, so let's examine why these atrocities befell us as a people. Let's read the book of Deuteronomy 20, verse 15. It says, And it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. That's the reason why we were smitten before our enemy. That was the reason why our names was changed. We were renamed as a nation we were moved into all different parts of the earth and we suffered the curses of Deuteronomy but now we must repent to come back as the Israelites hey, Shalom Israel most high Christ bless so we are at camp in Sam Sharp Square earlier we did a, a, a documentary pretty much on our forefather Sam Sharp the rebellion the aftermath of the rebellion, our people have been without hope for many years. But now the prophets of God, the God wake us up and God have sent us out for this mission. 
This is a new revolution, keeping the commandments in the faith of Christ. Our forefathers failed under Sam Sharp, Paul Bogle, Marcus Garvey. But this is a new period. This is a new revolution. The men, we are back in the streets. We are teaching, we are building up the people. And the gates of hell won't prevail. So with that, Israel, stay tuned. Most high Christ bless.